Hi everyone, I'm Fiona and today I'm going to be doing a video looking at obedience to authority, specifically at the situational factors as a part of your psychology A-level AQA exam. This video alongside the other ones I have done are a part of paper one for the social influence topic and if you're unfamiliar with the content for Milgram I recommend going to the previous video because this video is extending on the knowledge that we previously discussed. So once you feel comfortable with Milgram's original experiment, come back to this video to extend your knowledge. So there are three variations of Milgram that you need to be aware of. And the first one is proximity. A variation of Milgram study was completed where the teacher and the learner were seated in the same room. The percentage of obedience dropped from 65% to 40% for administering the full 450 volts, presumably because the teacher was able to experience the learner's pain more directly. In another variation, the teacher had to force the learner's hand directly onto the shock plate. The percentage dropped further to 30% allowing us to conclude that the closer the proximity of the teacher to the learner, the lower the level of obedience. And the same can be said for the proximity of the authority figure as well. In one variation, all instructions after the initial one were given over the phone as the experimenter had left the room. The level of obedience dropped again to 21%, administering the full 450 so that's your first variation. Then the second one is about location. In the original experiment, it was conducted at Yale University, so it was very prestigious. Whereas a variation was done where it was conducted in a rundown building instead. The percentage of obedience dropped to 47.5% for those that administered the full 450 volts. And this highlights the impact of location on obedience, with less credible locations resulting in a reduction in the level of obedience. And as I said, the original experiment took place at Yale, so participants may have been more likely to give the study credence. Then lastly, the final variation is uniform. In the original study that we looked at last week, the experimenter wore a lab coat as a symbol of his authority. However, a variation was done where the experimenter was called away because of an inconvenient phone call and a member of the public replaced them wearing ordinary clothes. This person was a confederate and so was aware of the aims of the study and was employed by the experimenter. And when the confederate was put in charge, the percentage of obedience dramatically dropped to 20% for individuals that administered the full 450 volts. So this shows the power of uniform. Then I've got a little bit on legitimate authority. This isn't a variation of Milgram, but it's just an added explanation to help you understand why the participants obeyed more in the original study. So with legitimate authority, it goes to say that for a person to obey an instruction, they need to believe that the authority is legitimate and this can be affected by multiple variables. And in another video, I will go through legitimate authority and agentic state. And when you feel comfortable with those terms, you can include those in the social influence topic as a whole. I don't want you to think that you are strictly confined with the links that you make within a topic because if it's relevant you can include it and legitimate authority is very relevant to Milgram but for now that is all of the AO1 and core knowledge that you need to know. Then we move on to the evaluations. As I've said in previous videos these evaluations I wrote when I was in school they worked for me 
that doesn't mean that they work for you and that's okay. There are so many evaluations that you can use for every single topic, but if you're struggling, then feel free to use these in this video to give you some ideas or to learn how to structure, etc. And I'm going to do another video looking specifically at exam technique and how to structure evaluations because that's something I struggled with. So undoubtedly, some of you guys might be struggling too. But going back to the evaluations for the variations of milgram. The first one is a strength of situational factors affecting obedience is that there is research support. Bickman in 1974 had three confederates dressed in three different outfits, a jacket and tie, a milkman and a security guard. It was found that people were twice as likely to obey the security guard than the one dressed in jacket and tie when asked to do tasks such as picking up litter. This matters because it supports Milgram's conclusion that a uniform conveys the authority of its wearer and is a situational factor likely to produce obedience or influence obedience. However, a limitation of variations of Milgram is that they may lack internal validity. Orne and Holland criticised Milgram by saying many of the participants realised the experiment was faked, which is made even more likely in the variations due to the extra manipulation. A good example of this is when the experimenter was replaced by a member of the public, which even Milgram recognised that the situation was so contrived some participants could have figured out the truth. This matters because it is unclear whether the results are genuinely due to the operation of obedience or because the participants saw through the deception. Then finally, a strength of Milgram's research is that his findings have been replicated in other cultures. Miranda et al. in 1981 found an obedience rate of over 90% among Spanish students, suggesting that Milgram's conclusions about obedience are not limited to American males, but are valid across cultures and can apply to females as well. However, Smith and Bond in 1998 showed that most replications occur in Western developed societies, which are not culturally different from the USA. You can add on to this by saying that the variations need to be conducted in more collectivist cultures maybe, or in non-Western cultures to truly determine if it is culture bound to Western societies, that is, you can only find those results in Western societies, or if it is a universal concept. Then despite this, the results matter because it shows that Milgram's findings do not just apply to Americans. I hope you found those useful and just a quick top tip. I know that research methods is rarely anyone's favorite topic. However, when it comes to terms like validity, reliability, they are extremely important to include in your evaluations so you can show the marker your depth of knowledge and be able to truly criticize the study and make your point clear if you make it more scientific by bringing in those sorts of terms. Next, we have an exam question. Outline research into the effect of situational variables on obedience and discuss what this tells us about why people obey. And it's worth 12 marks. In an A-level paper, you would have this question as a 16 marker. So if you were doing this at AS, keep it as 12 marks. If you're doing it at A-level, bump it up to 16 marks. And the only difference is that you are adding on an extra evaluation. So feel free to pause this video, have a go at writing it out. You can time yourself or you can just do a brief plan or just pause it and think in your mind about what kind of things you'd want to include if you're writing out this essay. And then when you feel like you've got all your ideas, continue on with the video and I'll go through the mark scheme. So this table breaks down the marks and what you need to do 
to hit each level and how many marks are in each level. So to get the top level, you need to be achieving 10, at least 10 marks of 12 marks. And it goes into detail about how your knowledge of research into the effect of situational variables is accurate and generally well detailed and discussion is effective. You may sometimes lack detail um, or expanding on your points, but your answer is clear and coherent and your specialist terminology is used effectively. When you are doing past papers as part of your revision, always look at the examiner's comments or observe these tables because it tells you how many marks you need to get to hit a certain level and what you need to do to hit that level. So please pay attention to these tables. Obviously the content, which we will move on to next, is extremely important, but do not underestimate the importance of these exam tables. So now we'll move on to the content that you can include for your answer. And first we'll start off with the AO1, which is worth six marks. Your knowledge of procedure and or findings of research into the effects of proximity, location and uniform. So the three variations that we have discussed in this video are essential for you to complete this answer efficiently. And then evaluations that you could talk about. You can talk about the analysis of the effects of variations, discussion of reasons why rate of obedience changes, such as agentic and autonomous state, legitimacy of authority, personality and dispositional factors, and we will move on to those terms in a different video. You can also talk about the methodology of the variations and how we can analyse them in regards to the variables to determine the credibility of it. For example, you could bring in demand characteristics, external validity, and how some strengths may apply to some variations more than others. You could talk about the use of systematic procedures to ensure that cause and effect could be established, enabling conclusions to be drawn. And you can talk about real life examples to support or contradict the research into the effect of variables. For example, Mandel in 1998, with the mass killing of Jews being undertaken in close proximity of the victims without protest. And in Slater's 2006 study in a virtual environment, where there was a condition where the participant had to shock the learner via text from a mobile phone. And you can credit other relevant limitations. So it is not limited to the things in the mark scheme. There are so many options that you can put. So when you are completing exam questions and you think that your answer is incorrect because it isn't specifically mentioned in the mark scheme, that is not true. There are just too many answers for to be written down in a mark scheme. Next, we'll finish off with a nice quick multiple choice where it asks you to identify the situational variables that can affect obedience. Once again, pause the video, think about it, and then come back. The answer to that was A and E. I hope that you've all found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you can answer somebody else's comment, that is amazing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll be back soon continuing our series into AQA Psychology A-Level. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.